It used to be called Mansky Grill, and that was owned by Roland and Ruth Mansky. pictures of the last days of the war in Europe show American and Russian troops as they joined at Torgau on the River Elbe, splitting German armies in two. Roland was in World War II, and when he got back, he decided to start a diner. They had some dough left over from the pastries they were making, and then they turned that into a Mansky roll. So it was a grill first, and then they served pastries, and then the Mansky roll got some traction. And then um, I think they broke off as two separate entities. And then the early 60s, Gil Renesak bought the place and then renamed it Gil's Broiler. And when he bought the grill, he also bought the Mansky roll. And then my dad bought it uh, in 2000 and left it Gil's Broiler. And we also bought the bakery with it. How did it become Ruffin's? Um, I think just good marketing and the product speaks for it. I mean, how amazing it is. It's not really many things like it. You could say Cinnabon. But, I mean, we don't use preservatives, um, and they're baked fresh every single morning. Uh, we have, like, this buttery topping, and we serve it warm. So it's just delicious, and I don't think there's anything else like it. I would say the roll itself. I think the roll is just something that was so unique. It's something that I explain to everyone, too, that, you know, when you walk in here and you try the roll, you're almost, I'm almost guaranteeing you, you're not going to have anything else like that outside the store just because of its uniqueness, you know. it's. It's somehow so simple and yet so different. He was Texas State's most prominent alum, and being from Texas State, or SWT it was called earlier, um, he knew of Gill's Broiler and the Mansky Roll Bakery. So when he got elected as president, he remembered this place and wanted to get some rolls shipped to the White House. And so the Mansky Roll Bakery did. My dad might have met George Strait. Yeah, also, um, the Yin Yang Twins, right? Really? Yeah, and then, yeah, and then Blue October. Do you know Blue October? They live here. Uh, they have some good, great songs. And then also, um, do you guys know what are they called? Brockhampton. Yeah. So Brockhampton filmed a music video here inside of Gills Broiler. Yeah, I'll, I'll get you the name of it after this. But it was cool. So we're supporting all the artists. Yeah. I'm actually the only other family member who works here. Yeah, it's uh, me and my cousin, and then we have our one baker, two of our cashiers, and then one more cook. Yeah. But I'm the only other family member in the shop. My main role was making sure the food itself was being made properly and being given out properly. Uh, but then, you know, there's also tasks like doing fundraisers for the shop, you know, where we have a a high quantity amount of rolls that we got to make for a specific time so it'll put me in a position where I got to work on rolls and burgers at the same time so it's like I'm really good at just doing both if I need to yeah exactly exactly uh, you know some of them are just like elementary schools like one of them was uh, a teacher appreciation you know we went ahead and uh, me and my cousin Christian actually walked the entire school going to different rooms giving them a free Mansky roll just you know letting them know we appreciate them and yeah, that was actually a really huge success. Yeah, there's just not a lot of uh, places nowadays where everything's just so handmade and everything has such a well-established connection between ownership and I mean uh, ownership and employees. You know, like I really feel here that if I have an opinion and I want to voice it and make a change here, I feel that the possibility of that are just so high. Whereas nowadays, I feel like anywhere else you might go, you might just be another number, or you might just be another face. Whereas here, I feel that. You know, I'm Ryan when I walk through that door. You know, I'm Brian, the manager here. You know, I'm the guy who's going to make sure that the shift goes well, and I'm the sh I'm the guy to make sure that you know, if there's any problem, they can come to me and make sure that's done. And you know, I like that a lot. You know, and I feel that a lot of the other employees feel that way as well. So I'm glad I can make a cool environment for them too. Yes, I have always wanted to be involved in the family business. Uh, growing up watching my dad um, like market and, and cook and cashier and be out there creating beer specials and it's just an array of things that you could do within the business which I thought was amazing and I appreciated it. It's not just going back there and cooking food, it's getting to interact with people and in all aspects of the business which I find very rewarding. My dad's always our family but my dad specifically because he's the point of the spear, has always been family over everything. So it made decisions like coming to our soccer games or working a shift pretty easy for him. Soccer games would always 
win that match. I think sometimes there's a lot of pressure to perform and when it's not performing how you'd like. It could be a little stressful, but when you have the talent of my dad here, it's pretty easy to get out of that corner. Yeah. I would definitely say it had its moments of being stressful, you know, just because I want to see I want to see the shop thrive. So you know, when I don't, it, it kind of hurts to see. But I know that it's not an attitude I have for it. I know it's a hey, you know, it right now we're not doing so well, but let's just get back up and we'll just keep going. So it was definitely a challenge, you know, not see as many regulars or even customers at all coming in. But I knew that it wasn't permanent. But it just it did take a small adjustment to you know make. And it also gave us the freedom to, you know, really look at the shop and think, okay, what can we do to really improve it? What can we do for the community themselves? How can they, you know, come in here and actually love being in here and being able to say, wow, you know what? I still got a little extra money out like, while walking out. So I think that was a challenge that was kind of cool to go through. In the beginning, uh, when we first opened up after the initial COVID outbreak, we obviously set the six feet apart and had all the rules. We were wiping down everything with this intense like anti-virus bacterial cleaning like every 10 minutes just to make sure that everyone was safe wearing masks obviously and gloves which we always do uh, and then when we first opened up we were doing a lot of Mansky roll deliveries just around the town to make sure that people could have Mansky rolls available if they wanted because they're stuck at home um, and then People were still afraid to come out to the businesses at the beginning, so we really had to ramp up the Mansky rolls and then doing curbside, which is still available now, ordering online. So it's really streamlined how people order and receive their food, which has really helped us and them, the customer. For downtown businesses in San Marcos, parking is always really hard. So we've lost out on a few customers there. But since COVID broke out, we have like these um, two signs for parking spots, 15 minute curbside pickup, which I think has helped businesses. And I think it's great. The hardest part for me was just wearing a mask in the kitchen, just because, you know, the constant heat and then the heat I'm producing myself, it's just not a good combination altogether. So, you know, uh, I think that was probably the most difficult part. And then uh, being careful, being more careful about, you know, not so much more careful, but being more understanding of how customers might feel being out in public. I think that was something else to really, you know, be on the lookout for and just, I guess, maybe another challenge of trying to make sure everyone's comfortable. Uh, when COVID first hit, we wanted to make sure that our employees were safe and that the customers coming in were safe. So we actually closed down the first bit of COVID, the first few months when we were a little bit unsure about what was going on. And then after the governor came out saying that we could open a little bit, we waited a couple of weeks to make sure it was the right move, and then we decided that we would ultimately open up. Um, and we're still a little affected by it because before we used to be open 8 a.m. to 10 p.m., and right now it's just 11 a.m. to 5 p.m. Um, so we're still feeling the effects of it, but we're moving past it each day that passes in each week. It's been a lot of help having my dad um, kind of in my ear when I, when I need his help. So he'll guide me on which moves I should make and what things I should do. Um, it's been a pretty smooth handoff, I'd say. Yeah, without compromising any of the qualities that we like to reassure our customers that we have. Yeah, I think it's the care that we put in everything that we do. My dad said this best um, in regards to the Mansky rolls. We don't make a million Mansky rolls. We make one Mansky roll a million times. And that's exactly how we do things. It's not just burger flipping. We like put time and care into each ticket that we get and make sure that it's delivered and everything's clean in the area and just all that good stuff. I think because we've been around for so long, we're a legacy brand like you said, um, and there's been multiple generations that have, four generations even, that have sat down in, in this place and it's been a spot for people to reminisce and remember the good times, I suppose. Um, and I think it's important to keep that spot for people that want to come visit and remember the times that they had when they were here.